Let's get your images zipped together. Introducing Mosaic Master. Welcome to SETI Astro. So be sure to head over to SETIastro.com. And if you ever want to join our uh, Discord discussion, this is where you can find a link to our Discord as well. Under Astro Program, SETI Astro Suite, you'll find the link to uh, download it, get it here. And it'll take you over to our GitHub repository uh, where you can get the newest version, version 2.10.3. Uh, we'll cover some of the the new features and then dive into the the biggest one so amongst a lot of different bug fixes where like uh, you hit a key on your keyboard and curves sometimes it would freeze or or some other things i've added the ability to save or open a project so saving your project will take everything that's in every single slot all the metadata any masks you've recreated and even any slot names you've recreated and, and update that so I'm gonna go ahead and, and open a project. I have one here, just uh, test.sas. The extension will be .sas for SETI Astro Suite. Click open, and it's done. So uh, here is our image. I had something in uh, test slot one, mask. I had a mask test over here as well. And that's, that's gonna be a great way for you to just save the state of your project throughout it, such that if something does happen, you won't lose the uh, the progress you've made. I think that's uh, going to be really important as we're progressing, especially when I add new features. I try to make them as bug free as possible upon the, the release, right? But uh, it's always best to, to save your project as you're going along. And it saves, it saves a lot quicker than PixInsight's project saving too. The other uh, pretty big update in pixel math was it now allows you to enter a single expression. This is like what you're already doing where it's like slot, uh, zero minus the minimum of slot zero. You could also enter separate expressions for R, G, and B. In this way, now you can do uh, slot zero, the red channel, minus, I don't know, the minimum of slot zero, the green channel, into the red channel. And you could do similar index, index expressions for the red, green, and blue channels. You could also uh, set up your favorites now. So if you have a, an expression in there you want, you could just save to favorites, and then you'll have a, a favorite list here. So you can just go ahead and load up your favorites uh, in order to call them quick and just execute them. Uh, there's also a method of just clearing all your favorites if you get a whole bunch here, or if you just wanna remove a particular one, you could do that as well. Okay, let's move on to the star of this update. Uh, you'll see a new menu bar item up here, Mosaic, Mosaic Master. You'd also find the Mosaic Master here on the, uh, with the other geometry functions, and it allows you to create a mosaic. Uh, mosaics are always hard <laughs> in, in any program, uh, so I try to make this as simple as possible. Uh, it will require uh, you getting plate solve solutions to do the initial rough alignment, and then from there, it's going to use uh, stellar features in order to fine tune your alignment such that you don't get any like double stars and stuff like that. Let's go into the menu here. There's a button to add an image. Uh, so I got, you know, various files here. You could, you could add them. There's a method to remove the select it. And if there is an astrometric solution in the FITS header, it's gonna put this WCS, that's World Coordinated System, that it actually found in the FITS header for you. If you don't trust the current plate solve solution in your FITS header, you could always click force the blind solve anyways, and it's going to use astrometry.net to, to do that blind solve. You don't have to use FITS files, but I highly recommend using linear FITS files in this such that when it finds the astrometric solution, it could save it to the FITS header, and you could just reuse it later on in the future because it'll have that information. If you use other files, TIFFs, XISFs, it's not going to save that um, plate solved metadata, so you won't be able, you'll have to plate solve it every time. So I highly recommend using linear FITS images. You could even add them from your slots if you have, you know, did some pre-processing, maybe you did like uh, ADBE on them, or you did uh, some other 
uh, normalization between them or blemished, blasted, some of them, what, whatever the case, if you have various mosaic tiles stored in your slots, you can go ahead and add them from your slots if that is the case. And uh, there's also a preview selected button. So you can click preview select it. It does a hard auto stretch on whatever is in this particular selected, right? Because they're, they're linear. So you could make sure you have all the various tiles that you were really working on. So this is two different halves of the California Nebula. It's a, it's a two by one mosaic. I do want to talk a little bit of how it's going to go about accomplishing creating the mosaic. The first thing it's going to do is put all your tiles in a linear pseudo state where all the medians match. So that way all the intensities of all your tiles will be roughly the same. Then it's going to use the world coordinated system from the plate solutions to do the rough placement. Now here is just if you naively do alignment based on the RAN deck it gets from the plate solve solution. It looks pretty close, but if you zoom in, you're going to see all these like double stars because the alignment wasn't perfect. So along the overlap area, it's actually mismatched and you'll have all these uh, double solutions and a smearing of your data over the overlap selection. That is why after we do the world coordinated system transform, we're going to now use all the stars in the overlap region and do a stellar alignment of them, right? You could see all these duplications from the, from the misalignment. Now in the overlapping area, it's going to find the 25 best stars to use and make triangles out of them for both the one image and then the other image it's adding to the mosaic. Just to give you an idea of how much computation's in there to actually do this alignment and to make it really precise, here are 25 random points with all the lines drawn to it. it it's called a complete graph. Now, in this image, if you want to take a guess how many triangles there are, you could pause the video quickly and um, maybe make a fun exercise and try counting up them or, or if you know the shorthand for it, but there's 2,300 triangles in this image. So when we're matching the stellar features of one image to the other, right, the scales are going to be a little bit different. There's a little bit of warping from lens distortion, all that. So we're going to take similar triangles and try to pair up as many similar triangles as possible between the two, allowing for a, a little bit of wiggle room for tolerances in lens distortion. And then we're going to reject the outliers and then using the inliers, we're actually going to warp the second image uh, with some affine transforms. So it's going to be a, a very precise adding of your second image into the mosaic. And that's how we're going to build up the mosaic image by image. It's going to be able to do this uh, similar triangle transformation and, and blend them all together. Now with all the math gobbledygook out of the way, we can, we can go into it. Uh, I already have plate solved both these fits. So it does say WCS next to them. If you want to, again, force the blind solve, I would highly recommend that if you're bringing files over from XISF to FITS, I would force the blind solve because PixInsight doesn't do the final plate solution into the FITS header. They keep it in their own metadata and never update the FITS header. So the FITS header is going to be wrong if you convert XISF to FITS. But all you gotta do now is collect click align and create the mosaic. And now it's going to take the very first image and project that onto the celestial sphere. This is going to be your reference image and it's going to take all the fits header data from all of the images and calculate the big bounding box for all the images in there. When it has that big bounding box, again, it's uh, projecting that first image onto the celestial sphere in that bounding box. And now it's going to project the second image onto the celestial sphere as your rough initial alignment. And then it's going to move into the stellar refinement. It needs to find where all the overlapping region is before it can uh, detect the stars in them. And with creating mosaics, this is not a fast process. It's gonna be one of those things where you're gonna click align and create and maybe go get a cup of coffee. 
So now you can see it's going to use the 25 reference stars from the first image and the 25 new stars from the image it wants to add. And you can see how many candidate triangles it's checked. If it's a candidate triangle, that means it met the threshold of the transform it's looking for and it's skipping a bunch of other ones. So every once in a while you'll see something else flash up there with telling you how many triangles it's actually looked through. So that was now 500 signatures it's looked through. We're at 174 triangle candidates that it's uh, going to put in the stack to see what's the inliers and outliers. And again, for 25 stellar features, that's 2300 triangle signatures it needs to uh, look through and pair up. There, it honestly wasn't too bad. About two minutes, it used 700 out of the 200 and, or 2,300 triangles for its actual transformation. And now it's going to show you uh, the preview of the completed mosaic. From here, you can keep this open, you can um, expand this, but the next thing to really do is just click Save to Image Manager. Now it's going to push that to slot one it's going to show you a preview of the final mosaic, which really is just the, the same image there. We'll go ahead and close both these, close our mosaic master, and now we can go ahead and, and do like an auto stretch. And here's our combined mosaic. And you can see here, here's the big overlapping area here, but even zooming way in here, you don't, you don't see anything off about, about the area. Uh, it's going to be hugely important that you do remove gradients beforehand. Um, so in the very uh, edge here, there's a little difference here from um, gradient. So it is, it is important to, to remove the gradients. Now there is some blending and feathering that uh, is taken into account creating the overlap area to help smooth that all out. And you may see that the noise is less prominent in the overlap area too because it actually has twice the signal, right? Signal from one of the images and signal from the other one of the images. Now when you're processing multiple channels, you would do the same for your like oxygen or your sulfur. Just make sure you have your images in the same order. That way it uses that same first one as the reference on each of them and it'll create the, the mosaics the, the exact same way. And you'll see all this black border around there too. This is a perfect opportunity to go ahead and open your crop tool, do the auto stretch. And apply a crop. There. And now it's it's done. You can you can take it over to sharpen denoise. Maybe you want to do um, sharpening and denoising, removing the stars. I'll just run a quick uh, statistical stretch on it to to make it nonlinear for viewing here in the video. And here's our our two by two mosaic of the California. It it just looks great. It's ready to go. Ready to to be further processed. Now I also ran one on a, a two by two of the North American and Pelican Nebula. I saved it as a project here, North American Mosaic.sas. I'm gonna just open the project. And now our project's open. Uh, you can see it's uh, 8,400 pixels by 6,400 pixels. So, so quite large. And uh, right here's the, here's the toggled auto stretch preview of the, the four by four mosaic here. Um, so it, it can handle uh, large ones as it's putting in more uh, tiles as well, not just a, a two by two. And if you've followed my channel and my uh, programs and scripts long enough, you know that my initial release is, is really just the initial release of something like this. I'll be continually making updates based on your guys' suggestions, what you see going wrong, uh, which images aren't working as we make it more and more robust. I'm hoping at the end we'll have a um, pretty much what it is right now. Load in your images, click align and create, and let it do all the work for you. You can use um, non-linear images in here. It will bring it to a pseudo linear state prior to the aligning and then stretch it back up to what you had previously. But I, I would recommend uh, linear fits data 
to be utilized in the uh, Mosaic Master. Well, let me know what you guys think. It should be out on all platforms. Please comment, like, and subscribe.